What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus and I'm back with another review. I'm here to talk about Greenleaf Season 4 Episode 9. This episode was titled God's Justice. Um, and I want to thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to click that thumbs up button. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. And click that notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post uploads to this channel. Um, I also want to thank those of you all that have been um, watching the, the different clips and things that I post from my church services. And some of you all have actually gone over and subscribed to my church's channel. So shout out to y'all and thank y'all for the support. So let's get into the video. This week episode, it begins with Judy, Grace, and Connie meeting with Clara to discuss her vote on the Deacon Board meeting. Um, they try to convince Clara that Hustle Headquarters having more board seats, uh, which will be a 50-50 split between Hustle Headquarters and Calvary. Shout out to Random TV Reviews. Um, it, it won't affect Calvary's independence. But after uh, being schooled by Lady May at her engagement party, Clara has questions. You know, she asks, what about leaving room for God? Since Grace now knows that um, she'll be at the helm after the board's reorganization, she has an extra incentive to get Clara to see things her way, and she does. She explains that Hustle Headquarters is willing to pour millions into the church and that an even split of votes will mean there will be more conversation before voting. And Clara says, I will see y'all at the meeting and I will vote yes. Um, and later on after that, Corinne comes to get um, with Clara. Um... All of the deacons have been met at this point. Everybody has been pretty much talked to or coerced into voting except for Connie. But y'all know, y'all already know, you know, she they, she, they got her in their pocket. So after the meeting is over, Grace talks to Lady May on the phone. She tells her how Clara is going to vote. Lady tells her that Bishop plans to meet with Connie to discuss her vote. Um... And so in the next scene, we see where... Phil comes into Grace's office and she asks, um, you know, she says, Pastor DeMars, how can I help? Now, I'm confused. I guess, we, I think, because I think Calvary is a Baptist church. Because I thought that the title pastor belonged to the person that was actually the overseer of the church. Um, now, I do understand that a lot of churches they do have associate pastors and or assistant pastors they have youth pastors and things of that nature but we don't call them pastor we normally call them minister elder evangelist whatever their title is um but i don't know i guess the, i guess depending on the denomination i guess it's different um and so when she asks, how can I help? He says, by resigning. And he tells her that he has proof that she lied to keep her son out of jail. Um, and he tells her she has until Sunday to decide if she will resign before he goes to the police. And he walks out saying, God is good. Now, my thing with Phil is the fact that he's doing all this trying, you know, because his whole end goal is, he wants to take over as the head pastor, but I kind of feel like, you know, if Grace, if at the end of, when, when everything comes to a head, if Grace is not this, is, is no longer the head pastor, he's not going to get the position. Because my thing is, you've been following, I don't know how long him and Bob have been associated with each other, but you've been following this man being his kissing this man's hinds part you've already revealed that you write his sermons in his book and 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 this and this man still ain't gave you a a, a, a head pastor position at none of the churches that y'all them took over girl miss me with that one but anyway so we go back to the greenleaf house and Car carissa is trying to um she's on this whole thing of trying to figure out excuse me who's gonna get the house in the event that Lady May and Bishop move on to pasture. And so he was, you know, she said, before you go, because he was telling her that he's going to meet Dante at his new sports bar. And she was like, before you go, ask your mother about the house. 
um, Jacob, you know, he refuses to do so. He says that's rude. And she tries to explain to him that she just wants to know because she wants to determine if they have a share in the home. And if so, she wants to be able to shell, sell the share to get money and buy a home. He says, I'm happy living here. She says, I'm not. And Jacob tells her if she wants to know so badly, she can ask Lady May herself. Um, so Bishop walks up on Connie outside. Outside, I'm guessing she, she was at her house to discuss her vote in the upcoming meeting. He tells her that Hustle headquarters are carpet baggers with Bibles. She says that Hustle headquarters is marching the church into the pages of history. He wastes no time in telling Connie that he knows that she took a bribe to hand over Calvary to H&H. &H. And he also tells her that he knows that she gave money to her daughter for safekeeping. And Connie says, I'm not going to dignify that madness with a denial. And Bishop tells her that everybody is going to find out about the money if she doesn't vote against Hustle headquarters having more board seats. Um, now, mind you, Grace is trying to vote, is trying to get Connie to vote for the Hustle headquarters thing. But Bishop is trying to get her to vote against it. And let me also address something that I, you know, because I didn't review last week's episode. You know, because it was revealed that the reason why they have been buying up all the property around the church is because they're pretty much trying to make the church expand the church. They want to have like a restaurant and a gym and y'all all this other stuff. Now, here's the thing. I'm all here for that because now, now a lot of people, some of the other reviews that I watched, they was like, girl, that's why I don't go to, to, to um, what they say. That's why I don't go to or don't really care for mega churches because. You know, it's supposed to be about God, and when you're doing all this stuff, it's making it about money. But I'm like, so y'all don't want the churches to build restaurants and whatever to try to bring money to the church. But then, on the other hand, y'all be going off tell, talking about that the pastors be stealing money from their from they congregation. And I'm just like, well, girl, if they have a restaurant and, 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 and gyms and whatever else that they do to try to bring then they won't be happy i figure if they doing that then they won't have to be you know quote unquote uh tricking the people into giving all their money to the church because they'll be getting money from other places now what i will also say is that when it comes to i don't agree with all that being on the church campus i feel like if you're gonna have a, a restaurant for the church or a gym member it, sh it shouldn't be on the same campus or on the same grounds as the church now a school or an, a christian academy that's different but as far as like other type things it should be in a different location it should be on the same grounds as the church so jude comes and approaches corinne about getting calvary's bylaws um that's the third time that jude, jude judy has been asking for him but for whatever reason karen is you know every time she always give her an excuse um and so Jude was about to make her present the bylaws, but Corinne tells her that if she changes screens on her computer, she will lose the Amy Grant ticket that she's getting for Judy at her request. Um, I don't even know who Amy Grant is, so whatever. So the next thing we see with Lady May, I mean, Carissa approaches Lady May and asks her who will inherit the house after her and Bishop are dead and gone. And Lady May tells her that... Um, she was the one that cleared the safe as she was going to be jacked by my by her son's wife. But she tells Carissa that Grace, Charity, and Jacob will have equal shares. Um, yeah, whatever. So the next scene we see coming up, Grace comes up in Charity's office and basically was asking Charity, like, what did you tell Phil? You know, he came and told me that he got proof that I lied to the police. What proof does Phil have that I lied to the police? Tell me, Charity. And Charity pretty much was like, I don't know what Phil has. Now, some people believe that Phil actually has feelings for Charity. I personally believe that he may have, I don't think he's in love with Charity, but I do believe that he has some feelings for Charity. But I also feel like if it comes down to a situation where he has to choose between being the head pastor of that church and being with charity he's going to choose being the head pastor of the church i don't feel that if in the event that he becomes the head pastor there will not be 
an open position for Charity become to be one of the associate pastors. Um, I just, I honestly, I can't wait until it comes out that Charity is the one that has been spilling all this tea to fill the Mars. Now, I just, I just, I just don't get Charity. I mean, you know, because that's the whole thing, like, girl, because in the, a couple episodes before, you didn't want to expose the information about Grace lying to the police because you didn't want your nephew to go back to jail. But then my thing is, why did you come to him in the first place with the with the video? But anyway, like, girl, what's your motive? Because even Grace told her, like, girl, you know, whatever it is that I did to you or whatever it is you feel like I did to, to, to hurt you or whatever, it, it's not worth, you know, betraying, uh, destroying a life. And pretty much Charity's whole thing was, you shouldn't have lied. And Grace was like, that's all you got to say. Now, I think that, in, I think in the back of Grace's mind, she honestly, I don't think she believes her. I believe she knows that Charity had something to do with Phil getting that information because at this particular point, the only inside source that Phil has to the family is Charity. Because Bishop, Jacob, May, Carissa, ain't none of them really rocking with Phil like that. So... Yeah, charity girl, you, 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 um, but you, she's gonna be exposed sooner or later. So we see where Judy is in Phil's office, and when Phil asks her, like, "Girl, why'd you in my office?" She tells him that she's waiting for her Amy Grant. Excuse me. She's waiting for her Amy Grant tickets and a copy of Calvary's bylaws, and she asks him how his relationship is going with Charity, and he says it's going very well. Um, but Judy knows him, and she tells him that. He do he don't love charity, and if he does, is it because she's black? Um. Now my question is because obviously you know him and her have messed around before, and so I'm wondering if charity, maybe charity is the first black woman he's ever messed around with. Maybe that could explain the reason why she asked him that question. But anyway. He tells Judy that she and Charity are very similar underneath their skin. They are both daughters of important men and the fact that they don't get their just due in the shadow of their important fathers. And Judy asks Phil if the three of them can have dinner tonight. She says, I will never do anything to stop you from being happy. And she also asks Phil why he doesn't think that Grace has a chance to be named the long-term pastor of the church. And he just says, I have a feeling. Um... You know, because obviously at this point, he knows that she lied to the police. Um, she tells him she's feeling steak for dinner. So Jacob goes over to Buckets to see Dante. He explains his feelings and apologizes. And, you know, Dante says, you know, he accepts his apology. Um, and Dante wants to cut a check for, ex for excellence pre preparatory. Do Carissa even still work at that school? We ain't seen her... I haven't seen her at that school since Jacob first when when uh, Jacob first became pastor at um, Triumph Church. I ain't seen her at that school since then. But anyway, after having a conversation with the GM for the Red Devils, Dante believed the donation to the school would be a good look for him and get him a spot on the team again. And he asks Jacob if Carissa can set up a press conference to get the word out about his good deed. And so he gives check, the check to Jacob right then. Um, Phil approaches Charity about having dinner with Judy. And Charity, um, you know, was asked, does she know about Grace? And Phil assures her that she doesn't know about Grace. And Charity agrees to have dinner with Phil and Judy if they eat sushi. So... Sophia knows about Phil attempting to blackmail Grace. And so while Grace and Sophia are together in the suite, Sophia calls AJ to explain why he must come back home. Um, she leaves a lengthy voicemail because he didn't answer the phone. She says, my mom could go to jail. If she goes to jail, I'm going to lose my mother. But I think in his mind, he probably don't care because he, he lost his mother as soon as he was born. Um, she tells him that although he may have reasons to be upset with Grace, she should, he should consider Sophia's feelings. Um... I haven't done anything. I don't deserve this. I'm going to be like, but y'all don't even know each other that well for him to care about how you feel. But anyway. Um, but she does tell her mother that she's 
not going back to Hampton, at least for now. And he, she says, if I don't stay for this, what would I stay for? So Bishop approaches May and says, I'm debating whether to tell you this, but I'm feeling confident it will work out. And so he tells Lady May about his conversation with Connie. And she says, I'm flabbergasted. This, um, and she, you know, she had told him a couple episodes ago not to use that information to try to get Calvary back. She said she wants clean hands in attempting to get the church back. Um, and she explains that ungodly things cannot be used in godly love. Um, but at the same time, I think she knows that although he was misguided, he, you know, he acted out of love. And she says, if I didn't have you, I would be drowning in a pool of hopelessness. Uh, but she does also feel that that move against Connie is going to be our undoing. And she tells Bis Biscuit, she tells Bishop that she's going to a prayer closet where she will be until morning. I said, OK, then. So. Carissa comes to talk to Grace about buying Jacob's share of the Greenleaf estate. She explains that she and Jacob need more money to move out of the family home. Now, I'm confused because. Now, you done you don't went and slept with old dude. Now, we don't know. I don't remember uh, uh, them actually telling us how much the check was worth in the oil or how much they needed for the house. But I'm like, girl, so obviously you didn't put it. You didn't put it on them right. You don't went and betrayed your husband and slept with this man. And y'all still ain't got enough money to go move into the house. <laughs> anyway. Um. Carissa says that she that it should probably go for a million, but that they will accept anything over two twenty five two hundred and fifty thousand. What? Yeah, I think yeah, two hundred fifty thousand. I I missed I misplaced a comma in a period somewhere. But anyway, Grace tells her that she can swing it. Um, and so then Carissa asks her where she get her money from. None of your business, girl. If maybe if you maybe if you would spend more time at your job, you would have more money. Like, girl, I anyway. So we go back to Calvary and Connie tells Jude and Phil that the motion to expand the Deacon Board must be amended. It can no longer be a 50-50 deal. The current members have to maintain control. Um and she tells them that Bishop knows about the money that Hustle Headquarters gave to her. Judy agrees to a 60-40 split and asks Connie who told Bishop about the money. Connie tells her that she suspects Corinne is the culprit. So once Connie leaves, Judy wonders if the Greenleafs are experienced blackmailers. And so she goes and fires Corinne, telling her little missy. Calling her little missy. So she goes to see Grace in her office. Whose side are you on, Judy asks Grace. And she says, I need to know what you're talking about. So when we go back to the Greenleaf estate, Carissa and Jacob are in a good mood and they do, you know, they go in and, you know, they, 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 they I can't even talk right. They go and, you know, they, they get it in. Um, so we're going to assume that Carissa, that Grace had, has agreed to, to buy Carissa's share of the money. And then, you know, Jacob got money now from Dante, but that money is supposed to be used for the school, not for them to get a house. But anyway. So, Phil goes to dinner with Charity and Judy. Judy lets it slip that her and Phil used to date. Um, Judy. Wait, what? What did I write down? Judy tells what? Okay, okay. Now I had to get. So Grace is having a conversation with Lady May and Bishop. She tells them that Charity would not admit that she knows about Phil's blackmail. Bishop says that Charity is so hypnotized by Phil that she cannot even tie her shoes. Grace asks, you know, wants their advice. She doesn't know if she should step down or stay and fight. Lady May advises Gigi to tell everything to the congreg congregation on Sunday, including the fact that she lied to protect her son. That way, everything will be in the open and that the church decides. She explains that this world is just a waiting room for the next. 
And so, and, uh, that grace needs to care for her soul if she intends to go to heaven. You speak your own truth. But Bishop has a whole nother perspective, and he says, you do what's best for your son. And Lady May tells her, you do what's best for your soul. So, uh, Sophia, is that uh, the, the, the Buckets? Sports club opening with Dante, and of course Nikki and Zora is there. Um, to, it, it, to me, it just seems like Sophia is just upset about Zora and Nikki's new friendship, and you know she's um, getting it, you know, get, trying to get at Dante to, you know, just to throw it back up in Nikki's face. So. Uh, obviously, going back to the dinner after you know Charity is obviously feeling some way about the fact knowing that Charity, I mean Jude and Philip used to date, and once they get back in the car, Phil tells Charity that his relationship with Judy ended a long time ago. Um, now my question is because mind you, Judy is married, so my question I, we don't know how long she's been married, but was her and Phil messing around while she was married, or was it something that happened before she got married? But anyway, Charity is wondering if she's being used, and Phil placates her by giving her the keys to his apartment. He tells her that she should feel free to peruse his apartment, go through there, you know, look out where she will find a page in his prayer journal that is dedicated to her and all the things he wants to do for her. He ends with, I love you, and he explains that he only agreed to go to dinner with Jude to get her on our side. So, Fernando calls Carissa to tell her some information about the Greenleaf estate, but um, we don't exactly find out exactly what was said. So, Judy receives a copy of the bylaws and discovers that in the event of a tie, the most senior member of the board can break the tie. That means Connie is the tiebreaker. So, we go on a Sunday morning, Pastor Grace steps into the pulpit, and she owns it like she always does, asks the church to turn to Luke 2240, um, which is, you know, where they talk about what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, where Jesus was in there praying, and they told the disciples, y'all stay here while I go pray, and they kept falling asleep, um, and that was also the prayer where he was praying, and he told God, you know, if it be your will to take this cup from me, but let alone... Not my will, but your will be done. And I think she was actually going to tell the people, child, you know, we're going to actually tell the congregation, you know, you know what it was. But then Andre comes in and pretty much ruins everything. And she says, I'm sorry, church. There's been a change of plans. Effective immediately, I'm stepping down as pastor of Calvary Fellowship. Um... But you never know. Maybe she did. Maybe maybe what she did was right for her son and her soul, uh, because I mean, obviously, Hustle headquarters is caught up in a bunch of foolery, and if she had us, you know, if she stays on board, she might end up would end up going to hell. You never know. I'm the time. I'm. Really feeling some type of way about the fact that we only got one more episode because usually Greenleaf is like maybe 12 or 13 episodes, but this season only has 10. But I don't, I don't, is this the, I don't know if this is the mid season finale or if it's the season finale. I do know that they have been renewed for another season, so we ain't got to worry about that. Um, but anyway, y'all leave your comments down below and tell me what y'all thought about this episode if there's anything that I missed. Of course, y'all know we can talk about it in the comment section. Thank y'all for tuning in. I will talk to y'all later.